Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for standing by and welcome to the global launch of IEA's More Data, Less Energy, making network standby more efficient in billions of connected devices. This time all participants are in a listen-only mode. There will be a presentation followed by a question and answer session, at which time if you wish to ask a question, you will need to press star 1 on your telephone. I must advise you today's call is recorded Wednesday the 2nd of July 2014. I would now like to hand over to your speaker today, Greg Frost. Please go ahead, sir. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to our webinar. It's my pleasure to introduce to you Maria Vanderhoven, the Executive Director of the International Energy Agency, and Dier Hussain, the Director of Sustainable Policy and Technology. Uh, Maria Vanderhoven will run through uh, some brief remarks related to the, to the publication. Dier will then walk you through a slide presentation. At that point, we will turn it over to you for questions, for which we are also joined by Vida Rosite, the analyst at the IEA. Who, who wrote the report. Mrs. Vanderhoven, you have the floor. Thank you very much, Greg. And once again, welcome to the launch of more data, less energy, making networks and more efficient in building of connected devices. And yes, today we are launching a very important report because it clearly sets out the many and massive cumulative impacts resulting from the inefficiency of today's network connected devices, such as set-top boxes, printers, and income controls. And actually, it offers a range of effective measures that we can take to get on top of what will otherwise become a global problem. I bring that to you. The provision of connected devices has many, many benefits to the world, and that's fine. But clearly, right now, the cost is far higher than it should be. Because I'm losing money, in the form of wasted energy, which is leading to more costly power stations and more distribution infrastructure being built than we would otherwise need, not to mention all the extra greenhouse gases that are being emitted. A typical connected device uses around 65% more energy than it needs to perform its functions and can cost the average household many tens of dollars per year per device. Now, of course you can tell me this is not much, and this may not sound like much, but, there's always a but. In 2013, the cumulative impact of 14 billion of such devices was a loss of around $80 billion to consumers, and otherwise unnecessary operation of over 130 mid-sized coal plants produced around 400 terawatt hours of electricity and all the pollution and carbon emissions that goes with it. This is already a major problem. It's set to explode. By 2020, there could be around 50 billion connected devices. But this is a This leads to unnecessary costs of around $120 billion per year and nation of around 200 mid-sized coal-fired power plants producing 600 million tons of unnecessary car emissions. And by 2025, it could loon out to 148 billion a year, 250 power plants, and around 740 million tons of emissions. That's especially important given that our analysis in this energy technology perspective shows that electricity is set to be the fastest growing part of the energy sector. And indeed, by 2050, we expect the electricity to be the largest energy carrier. And this, network connected devices are part of one of the fastest growing sectors. The problem is not that these devices are often in standby mode, but that they typically use much more power than they should to maintain a connection and communicate with the network. But it need not be this way. If we adopt today's best available technologies, we can minimize the cost of meeting demand as the use and benefits of connected devices grows. In fact, such devices could perform exactly the same tasks in standby while using around 65% less power. So just as our lives are becoming smarter, are becoming more connected, so too must our approach to energy efficiency. This report describes technologies and technical solutions as well as a range of policy options that are available to reduce energy waste. And the technologies that policymakers, 
self-development organizations, soft hardware developers, designers, service providers, and manufacturers will all have a key role to play. Now, we already know that when all parts of the sector work together, massive savings can be realized on behalf of consumers. Energy efficiency policies play an important role in galvanizing action across the value chain to reduce unnecessary energy demand. One, one example, minimum energy performance standard programs and consumer labeling, such as Energy Star program, have already realized many billions of dollars of savings for consumers across a wide range of product categories, from washing machines to televisions. And this is, have also been effective in reducing standby energy consumption in non-connected devices for the launch of the IEA's 999 one-watt program. Time again, we have seen that manufacturers can innovate and come up with high-performing, reliable, and attractive products that are also energy efficient. And they have proven that they are up to the challenge. Today, we see that efforts to improve the efficiency of mobile devices, such as phones, are fast becoming a major selling point. Indeed, note that one well-known mobile phone manufacturer is basing its current marketing campaign for its flagship phone around its ability to use an absolute minimal amount of power to maintain a network connection via standby mode as a means of extending battery life. This example shows that it is possible to deliver network connectivity at a very low energy cost. Now it's time to push a new global initiative dedicated to improving the energy efficiency of network connected devices. That's for me. And I would now like to hand I would like to hand over to our Director of Sustainable Energy Policy and Technology, Didier Houssin, to take through the details of the report. Didier, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, Maria, and good morning, good afternoon, everyone. <laughs> well, what I want to do in this uh, PowerPoint presentation is share with you the key messages of this new book, More Data, Less Energy. Uh, first, I'd like to draw your attention on the rapidly rising energy consumptions uh, with, uh, of devices that are connected to the Internet. The global electricity demand, which is linked to information and communication technology, or ICD, has already reached 8% of total electricity consumption. This is more than the current annual electricity consumption of Canada and Germany combined. Of course, the infrastructure that enables the flow of data, like networks and large data centers, is responsible for a significant proportion of this electricity demand. Recent rapid increases in electricity demand driven telecommunication companies to start implementing measures to improve the energy efficiency of this infrastructure. However, there is a more dispersed and hidden energy demand, namely in the billions of networked enabled devices in <coughs> our homes and offices. The graph on the right shows the electricity demand of networks, personal computers, and data centers, all of which are growing at a faster rate than overall electricity demand. Whereas traditionally, PCs were one of the few devices connected to the Internet, other devices, such as televisions, game consoles, set-top boxes, and even air conditioning units, washing machines, and microwave ovens are now increasingly going online. As network connectivity continues to spread and demand for network services grows, use of network-enabled devices is expected to surge. The number of these devices on the market is growing fast. Today, there are 14 billion of them globally, and the number is expected to increase to 50 billion by 2020. Global electricity demand from network-enabled devices in homes and offices reaches 616 terawatt hours per day in 2013, and this number is expected to reach 1,140 terawatt hours per year by 20, 2025, uh, almost doubling um, um, by uh, 2025. Electricity consumption uh, by these network-enabled devices is growing at a faster rate than overall electricity demand by uh, 6 percent per year by 2025 uh, versus less than 3 percent for global electricity demand. 
Growth in the demand for ICT and associated electricity needs as implication for end users and also for telecommunication companies, for national governments and power utilities, because they need to ensure that there is sufficient supply capacity and security. Uh, let's explore some of the key trends and expected developments more in detail, and, and then how we can reduce this rapidly growing energy demand. Electricity demand from network connected devices could be slashed by two thirds by using best available technologies and solutions. Implementing these solutions is a missed opportunity to reduce energy demand and reduce consumer electricity bills. For example, if best available technologies had been adopted globally in 2013, 400 terawatt hours would have been saved and consumer bills could have been reduced by $80 billion. While the graph here shows the countries and regions where network enabled device electricity demand is currently highest, uh, internet access and uptake of network enabled devices is also expected to increase at a very rapid rate in emerging economies and developing countries. A significant portion of the electricity used in internet enabled ICD devices is just to maintain network connectivity. And most of this unnecessary energy consumption um, is, is, is since it is possible to provide the service of network connectivity for much less energy than typically is the case for many products today. Ben class products use just over 0.5 milliwatt to provide continuous network connectivity while others can use up to 25 watt or even more. Only here, up to 80% of the energy use of network-enabled devices is used just to maintain network connection. Network and communication protocols have traditionally been designed to guard against disruption to connectivity. This amounts to an almost continuous flow of messages. If a device does not respond in time, it is considered not to be part of the network and can get excluded. When a device powers down, it loses connectivity because it does not respond in time to messages. A continuous flow of messages can keep waking up a device so that it cannot power down to lower power modes. But there is a range of solutions that can fix this. As issues are available and some are already implemented in some devices. And there are two main types of solutions. Firstly, energy management solutions focus on prompting devices and equipment to power down to low power modes when not performing their primary functions and as quickly as possible and for the longest time possible. The term of solutions are power scaling solutions that seek to match the power draw in relation to the work which is being performed by the device or equipment by turning of unneeded functions and adjusting processing power. Illustrated on the slide, currently devices draw almost the same amount of power irrespective if they are dealing with high traffic volumes or low traffic volumes. These solutions can be achieved through improvements in hardware, software, or communication protocols or also a combination of these methods. While solutions do exist, they are still not routinely being implemented in all types of network-enabled devices. And the main reason for this is the lack of market demand. Some product categories, there is strong market demand, for example, mobile products. Consumer for mobile products, they want small, light products with long battery life that can connect to the networks virtually instantly. Consequently, manufacturers have implemented a range of appropriate solutions. But in other product categories, there is not the same demand. This is why there is a strong case for policy action to create incentives for manufacturers to implement best available energy saving technologies and solutions, and to create consumer awareness and demand for energy efficient products. Energy efficient solutions for network enabled devices do not just depend on policymakers. The entire uh, value chain from policymakers to consumers needs to become engaged and everyone has a role to play. Having energy efficiency in this area will require effort 
which by standard development organizations, software developers, hardware producers, service providers, and consumers. And this uh, publication outlines action that each of these stakeholders can take to promote energy efficiency. There are no technical barriers impeding the potential to integrate the energy efficiency and power management solutions in the mobile devices into other network-enabled devices. Slacking our market drivers to achieve the same level of efficiency, creating a strong case for policy intervention. Policy action that would be effective in tackling the issue of energy demand from network standby include minimum energy performance requirements or standards, voluntary agreements with industry, and consumer awareness campaigns. But in addition to policies, strong technical foundations are needed. They include international standards such as test procedures, new uh, energy or new energy efficiency metrics. The application outlines existing initiatives and highlights areas that require more work. To aid the role of consumer awareness campaigns as part of an effective policy mix to address the network standby, stand let, let me give you an example. Coming from Switzerland, the Swiss government implemented a network standby consumer awareness campaign where internet service providers reach out to their customers to stimulate use of existing energy management settings and efficient behavior. With more than 3 million modems and more than 2 million set-top boxes using 500 gigawatt hour annually, it was estimated that 180 gigawatt per hour could be saved. And this summer, uh, that it has just started, the uh, Swiss government launched another consumer awareness campaign targeting holiday makers. Calculations indicate that if all Swiss households turn their network-enabled devices off when heading off on holiday, then an additional 65 gigawatt hour could be saved. Our countries still have started to develop and implement network standby policies, in particular the European Union, Korea, and the United States. For example, starting from, from 2015, the Eco Design Directive um, in Europe has a power level requirement where devices that have higher network requirements will need to power down to 12 watts, and devices that have network connectivity will need to power down to 6 watts were not actively in use. network enabled devices are traded globally. International uh, cooperation provides the most efficient means to initiate action and ensure efforts contribute to shared goals. To stimulate international dialogue and policy cooperation, the International Energy Agency has developed the Digital Energy Efficiency Plan outlining how diverse measures can unlock fast energy savings without comprom compromising the quality of services delivered by network-enabled devices. And it, uh, it is composed of three types of measures. First, develop policies with clear and measurable energy efficiency objectives to promote power management in network-enabled devices. Secondly, intens intensify international cooperation to develop technical foundations for policy making, including the development of energy efficiency metrics and test procedures. Thirdly, we work towards establishing or supporting international initiatives to promote energy efficiency in the broader context of uh, the global uh, economy. Uh, in committing to these three measures, it is anticipated that governments would pursue the following key actions. Let's analyze and align existing policy approaches, establish international technology standards, and also to this industry to allow policy that builds confidence and encourage innovation, and encourage the development of communication protocols that support energy efficiency, and lastly, prioritize data collection, including alignment of methodologies. The book, which is a co-publication with the IEA Implementing Agreement for Energy Efficient and use Equipment, is available for free download from the IEA website. This project has been the first of its kind for the IEA. It clearly showed that the need to 
continue to track trends and developments and to provide analysis and guidance on how we can ensure and reap the full benefits that communication network connectivity provides and do that without an excessive cost in terms of increasing energy demand. The end of my presentation. Thank you for your attention and we will be happy to take questions. Thank you. Gentlemen, if you'd like to ask a question, please press star one on your telephone and wait to answer this request. Please press the hash. Question from the line of Mike Walker. Please go ahead. Uh, yes, hello. Uh, Mike Walker from the UK's Department of Energy and Climate Change. Um, right at the start, Maria spoke about the 1999 one-watt challenge. Have you given any thought to what the work challenge would be uh, in terms of how many watts we should be aiming for? I think we ask the Vida to answer that, that question because she is the lead author and I think she would be happy to take that question if you don't, don't mind. Thank you very much, Maria, and thank you much for this question. Uh, this is a question that we have been looking at from the outset of the project. What we did want from the outset of the project is find something that would be as catchy and as simple and as marketable as the one what our plan was. What we did find when looking at this topic area is that unfortunately the world has changed. Products are far more complex and the energy requirements of products are very varied and heterogeneous. And uh, that's why we decided not to uh, determine a set power level, but instead highlight the range of different types of activities that are needed to improve energy efficiency in this area. Moving forward, as technologies develop and new solutions are being implemented, it might be more feasible to uh, come up with a solution to propose the 0.5 watts for all connected devices, but we're not quite there yet. Thank you. Thank you. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, it's star one to ask a question. To cancel that request, please press the hash key. Yep, from the line of Rick Mitchell, please go ahead. Yes, Rick Mitchell from Bloomberg, Rick Mitchell from Bloomberg BMA. Um, can, can you say what, um, what level of uh, savings of CO2 emissions have you calculated for for the amount of 65% savings on energy consumption, I think you said to 2020. And, and how does that figure into, or does that figure into your two degree uh, global warming scenario for, um, for century? Thank you. She's smiling. <laughs> she would like to answer it. <laughs> Very much for this question. Uh, in terms of the, the carbon dioxide emissions that would be possible to di displace by improving the energy efficiency of these types of products, uh, the estimations vary somewhat from country to country and region to region, depending on uh, the type of energy mix. Uh, as an approximative figure, if we were to save uh, 400, 400 uh, terawatt hours, as would be possible already if, if we had implemented best available technologies today. Um, were, were, these, were, were these terawatt hours supplied by coal power plants? We would have uh, savings in the region of 400 uh, metric tons, million metric tons of carbon dioxide. In terms of integrating this topic area into our wider modeling, that is an area that we will be looking into, but this is an emerging issue in our first publication on the topic area, so we will be investigating how to align uh, further work. If I, did you speaking, if I may, if I may add a point on this, uh, the key message is it's the growing, it's, a, it's, the, the, it's the very rapid growth in demand of electricity, which is linked to the development of the internet at global level. So far, the, uh, uh, the uh, number of network uh, connected devices is mainly 
in industrial countries, in OECD countries, but it's growing extremely rapidly in emerging countries. So we think it's time to draw the attention of um, industry and policy makers about need to have an international initiative on this subject, uh, looking, because looking forward it will play an increasingly important role. This is what was also part of our analysis in ETP 2014, which also focuses on the role of electricity in the energy transition, with a key objective of decarbonizing the power sector almost entirely by 2050. We're not there either, of course, but I think both subjects need to be looked at in conjunction. One other reason why we chose to focus our work on networks and by that has to do with the lack of policy attention made on this issue, the very weak market drivers for energy efficiency improvement, and let's not forget there's the network enabled devices we are likely to place on electricity system, as Didier just mentioned, as a number of devices proliferate. What you can see that is that increasing electricity prices are already putting pressure on telecommunication operators to improve energy efficiency in data centers and networks. So that has already been going on. We see remarkable progress already in that area, but we don't see any progress in networks and by on the devices in home and offices. And that's why we took that as a focus point. Next one, please. Thank you. Thank you. Your next question comes from the line of Herbert Bertie. Please go ahead. Mitty, your line is open. Uh, sorry, sorry, I was muted. Um, uh, thank you for giving me the opportunity to, to ask this question. I have seen in the report uh, several parts dealing with standardization and the actions that could be launched within this area. Uh, being in this standardization domain, I also identified the need for harmonizing standards, uh, in particular for the energy efficiency issues. So SDOs are working on more or less the same domain, producing more or less the same standards, which are more or less comparable one to each other. There's been, uh, there is a, a role for the agency to play there to, to encourage SDOs to harmonize their standards which could be profitable for the industry and the end user. I will make, uh, thank you for the question. I'll make a general point and Vida will complement. Uh, on, in this project, we've, we, we've worked with an implementing agreement. So uh, people that look at the end use uh, uh, appliances uh, from a technical perspective, as well as with the uh, standardization organization that looks at, as you rightly pointed out, that uh, uh, work on standardization standardization or common standard at global level from a, from a, also from a technical approach. And we work closely with them. We held workshops with the standardization organization, and they themselves uh, asked the IEA to uh, be also vocal to uh, send the message, to put out the message to policymakers about the need to uh, not only standardize it, but also fix ambitious energy efficiency goals to these, uh, to these work. So there is a good complementarity between our role and the role of uh, uh, international standardization organizations, um, and, and these roles are very complementary. Yeah, would you like to compliment? Uh, thank you very much, Didi, and, and thank you, Gilbert, for the question. Uh, as you rightly put, as, as the world gets more and more complicated and more and more interconnected, there is increasing overlap and increasing opportunities of synergies between standardization in, in different areas. And this is a topic that many of uh, the existing standardization organizations are already looking at. Uh, we expect that there will be further focus on in the future on how standardization efforts can be harmonized, as well as uh, increasing focus on how we can ensure that energy efficiency considerations are mainstreamed throughout the standardization process, and how the engagement of policymakers and other stakeholders can be increased in the standardization making process. Thank you very much. Action, please. Your next question comes from the line of Mike Walker. Please go ahead. Uh, yes, again, um, I was just wondering, there's a lot of talk at the moment about the Internet of Things, which is a bit of a nebulous concept. But to what extent does the analysis here 
look at, I guess, what we'd consider conventionally network-capable products versus uh, Internet of Things, which sort of envisages that everything is going to be network cable. So are we, is your report just a subset of what we might be looking at in future? Uh, thank you for your question, Mike. Uh, I'd like to say that our report is a precursor of looking at the energy implications of Internet of Things. What we are looking at, we're focusing primarily on the devices in, in homes and offices, the end-use devices, as well as looking a bit at the in infrastructure and, and the networks that are needed to sustain uh, network connectivity to these devices. Uh, we do look briefly at future trends, including the Internet of Things, and it's definitely a topic that will warrant a lot of attention in the future in terms of energy implications because the Internet of Things whereby anything and everything could be connected to networks can unlock huge potential energy savings, but could, if energy efficiency isn't considered at the outset, isn't considered in how these systems are de devised and what types of uh, products and devices are used, could so entail an enormous energy cost. Just, let me just add one thing. What we see at this moment is that worldwide electricity use is increasing at a compound annual growth rate of less than 3%. <laughs> you have to compare to do 6% growth for network-enabled devices in homes and offices. So this underpins exactly the need to look into that issue as soon as possible because otherwise what you could get on energy efficiency efficiency, in one hand, you would lose on the other hand, and that would be a very, very bad situation. Yes, and that's partly why I asked the question, exactly. because there's a lot of, lot of thinking that the Internet of Things is inherently just a good thing. Well, actually, what we can see is that it will, it will really increase uh, electricity use, so you have, to do, you have to find ways to decrease electricity use for a, for instance for these network-enabled devices, because if you don't do that, tens of your unbelievable line, your figure won't be in black, but will be in red, and that's something we don't want to happen. And thank you. Next one, please. Thank you. Once again, as a reminder, ladies and gentlemen, it's star one to ask a question. To cancel that request, please press the key. There appears to be no further questions at this time. Please continue. Well, if there are no further questions, um, I'm, I, I think for the journalists who were on the call, we should spell Vida's name since it was not on the materials that we sent out. Vida Rosé, it's V-I-D-A Rosé, R-O-Z-I-T-E. I'm getting it right, correct? Yes. Uh, thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for joining this call. Please join us later in August for the launch of our medium-term renewables market report. That concludes the call. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. That concludes our conference for the day. Thank you for participating. You may all disconnect.